to Sedan of Pilgrims as Zion Lutheran Church for this today's service, Palm Sunday. We'd like to extend a warm welcome to our regular visitors, our Cambrai visitors and any other visitors, and of course our online viewers. Today's service will be conducted by Pastor Graham Genke. Pastor. Your King comes to you, righteous and having salvation. Gentle, Gentle and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated to sing the opening hymn, Lift High the Cross.
friends in Christ, for the five weeks of Lent, we have been preparing for the celebration of our Lord's suffering and death. Today, together with the whole church, we begin this holy week by welcoming our Messiah. So, like the people of long ago, let us welcome Jesus and follow him to the cross. We confess, we confess that, that we are born in bondage, bondage to sin, sin and, and cannot free ourselves. ourselves. We, we have, have sinned, sinned against you in thought, word and deed, by what we have done and by what we have failed to do. We have not loved you with our whole heart, and we have not loved our neighbour as ourselves. We deserve your eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us. Amen. I ask each of you in the presence of God who searches the heart, do you confess that you have sinned and do you repent of your sins? I do. Do you believe that Jesus Christ has redeemed you from all your sins and do you desire forgiveness in his name? I do. Do you intend with the help of the Holy Spirit to live as in God's presence and to strive daily to lead a holy life even as Christ has made you holy? I do. I do. As a called and ordained servant of the word, I announce the grace of God to all of you. On behalf of my Lord Jesus Christ and by his command, I forgive the sins of all of you who repent and believe. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Amen. The psalm for today is Psalm 31, various verses. Be gracious to me, O Lord, for I am in distress. My eye wastes away from grief, my soul and body also, for my life is spent with sorrow, and my years with sighing. My strength fails because of my misery, and my bones waste away. I am the scorn of all my adversaries, a horror to my neighbours an object of dread to my acquaintances. Those who see, see me in the street flee from, from me. I have passed out of mind like one who is dead. I, I have become, become like a broken vessel. vessel. For I hear the whispering of many, terror all around. As, as they, they scheme, scheme together, together against, against me, as, as they, they plot, plot to take my life. But I trust in you, O Lord, I say, you are my God. My times are in your hand. Deliver me from the hand of my enemies and persecutors. Let your face shine upon your servant. Save me in your steadfast love. Glory to the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forevermore. Amen.
The Lord be with you. And, and also, also with you. Let us pray together the prayer of the day. Almighty, Almighty and eternal and God, God, you, you sent your, your Son, our, our Saviour, Saviour, to take, take our, our nature, nature on himself and to suffer and die on the cross. Lead us to follow the example of his great humility and bring us to share in his resurrection. We ask this through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please remain seated for the first two readings, which will be read by Mark. The first reading for Palm Sunday is written in Isaiah chapter 50, beginning at verse 4. The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher, that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning he wakens, wakens my ear to listen as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious, I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me, and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me. Therefore, I have not been disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me, who will declare me guilty. This is the word of the Lord. And the second reading is written in Philippians chapter 2, beginning at verse 5. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who... Though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that, that Jesus Christ is the Lord, to the glory of God the Father. This is the word of the Lord. Christ, Christ humbled himself and, and became obedient unto death, death even, even death on, on a cross. cross. The Holy Gospel for Palm Sunday is written in chapter 19 of the Gospel according to St. Luke, reading from verse 28. After Jesus had said this, he went on ahead, going up to Jerusalem. When they had come near Bethphage and Bethany, at the place called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of the disciples, saying, Go into the village ahead of you, and as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you untying it? Just say this, the Lord needs it. So those who were sent departed and found it as he had told them. As they were untying the colt, its owners asked them, why are you untying the colt? They said, the Lord needs it. Then they brought it to Jesus, and after throwing their cloaks on the colt, they set Jesus on it. As he rode along, people kept spreading their cloaks on the road. As he was now approaching the path down from the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to praise God joyfully with a loud voice 
for all the deeds of power that they had seen, saying, Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest haven. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, Teacher, order your disciples to stop. He answered, I tell you, if these were silent, the stones would shout out. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, you, O Christ, Christ, Lamb Lamb of God. God. Thank Thank you, Lord Lord Jesus, Jesus, for for suffering suffering and dying for us. us. Remember Remember us and and save us. us. Amen. Amen. Please be seated to sing the next song, The Servant King. and peace to you from God the Father and from our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. My address for this morning is based on the second reading for today which you heard Mark read earlier from Philippians chapter 2. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, as you know today is Palm Sunday but it's also called Passion Sunday. Passion means the sufferings of Jesus which happened during this week around 2,000 years ago. 
there's something about the sufferings of Jesus that we don't fully grasp and sometimes we shy away from it. We love the praises of Palm Sunday and we eagerly come to joyfully celebrate Easter. But the darker days of Christ's suffering are often not as well attended. Maundy Thursday and especially Good Friday. People want a triumphant king, not a suffering servant or a bleeding lamb. St. Paul wrote to the Philippians and to us that Jesus chose to be a suffering servant. He could have remained as he was before the creation of the world, the glorious Son of God who had no flesh and no sufferings. Even when he became man, Jesus was still God. He could have remained in the form of God, but he chose the form of a servant. He chose weakness, pain and death. That's where the difficulty lies. We're approaching the day when God died. That's the offence of the cross. Because there Jesus, who is God, laid down his life. God by nature cannot die because he is eternal and immortal. Nor should God die because he is everything good, pure, loving and holy. But the death of Christ is the death of God and humankind doesn't want to face up to that horrible reality. Some people throughout the centuries have tried to decrease the offence of the, the cross by saying that Jesus didn't truly suffer on the cross. He only seemed to suffer. Others have said that Jesus was truly man, but he was not truly God. And therefore God himself did not die on the cross. Others have gone even further, saying that Jesus wasn't only a human like us, but he was also a sinner like us. Since sinners die every day, so there's no offence in the sinner's death. But against all those false views of Christ, St. Paul declares that Christ Jesus was in the form of God. He fully possessed all the majesty and holiness of the true God. He had all the power, knowledge and immortality of God but Jesus made himself of no reputation he took the form of a servant by ceasing to use his powers as God this isn't to say that Jesus only appeared to be a man as if he as if it was an illusion Jesus was really and truly a human being like us in every way except he was without sin. Jesus didn't become a sinner in his life, although in his death he became sin for us. That's the purpose of the passion of Christ. Jesus took on the form of a servant so that he could die a servant's death to pay for the sins of the entire world. For Christ never ceased to be God, not even on the cross. But he didn't use his full powers as God while he was on earth. Sometimes Jesus was tired, hungry or thirsty, even though by his divine nature he is never tired, hungry or thirsty. God doesn't suffer. God doesn't die but Christ who is true God and true man bled and died for you because he took on the form of a servant when his flesh suffered and died it was the flesh of God's son the flesh of a sinner would achieve nothing the death of an ordinary man such as you or me 
would mean little to the world. But Christ Jesus laid down his flesh and blood on the cross. And so his death means everything. The cross, the suffering and death of God incarnate, Jesus Christ, towers over every other event in world history. Only the cross matters. On the cross, Jesus claims solidarity with sinful humankind. He willingly made himself one of us, even though he was holy and sinless, unlike us. Jesus lived among humankind for about 30 years. He was one of us, even though his divinity was imaginally far above us. On the cross, Jesus embraced all humankind so that all of our sins and the weight of our guilt fell upon him. The form of a servant is the form of Christ upon the cross. He came in humility to serve us by carrying the heavy burdens that belong to us, the burdens of our sin, death and damnation. But these burdens weren't his to carry. He didn't need to suffer, but he chose to suffer. Christ Jesus, the only man who could choose not to die, chose the worst, worst death possible to save us. On Palm Sunday, he rode into Jerusalem on a donkey when he could have ridden upon the backs of angels. That's the humility of Christ. That's the form of a servant. Jesus rode into Jerusalem to present himself as the sacrifice to atone for the sins of the entire world. He lowered himself to the level of an animal whose only purpose was to be slaughtered. That's the form of a servant. At the same time that he chose, that he rode into Jerusalem to die, his mighty power was also upholding creation. At the same time that he suffered in the hands of sinful men, Jesus was also preserving their lives and the lives of all living creatures. At the same time that nails and thorns were driven into his holy flesh, the Son of God was also keeping the universe from collapsing into chaos. The lowly Son of Man, who looked like nothing but a pathetic dying carpenter's son, was actually God who protects and defends the world even when that world turns upon him and kills him. That's the form of a servant. Right now, Jesus remains a true man and is also truly God. That's how he will be from now on forever. But he's no longer in the form of a servant because now he's highly exalted. Now saints and angels in heaven bow before the glorious Son of God who shines before them in the unveiled form of his godliness. Even now, we on earth mimic those above. Many saints here below bow the knee at his presence when he comes to us in word and sacrament, in worship. Many bow our heads at the name of Jesus in our worship. For this is the name of the Lord of life and death, who conquered sin, death and the devil for us. This is the name of the Lord who freed you and me from our own death by dying himself. One day our text tells us all knees will bow and all tongues confess 
whether they like it or not, even Satan's black tongue will be forced to confess that Jesus is Lord. So all creation will praise this Lord and confess his name because he suffered on your behalf. He died in your place. He took on the form of a servant so that he who is God in human form could lay down his life on the cross for you. With heaven and earth, we give glory to his great name, which is above every name, Jesus Christ, Lord and God. Amen. And the peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. I ask you now to please rise and join with me in confessing our common faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated to sing the next song, Freely, Freely, during which your offerings will be received and brought to the altar.
let us pray together the offering prayer. Thank you, Thank loving, you Father, loving Father, Father that, that your, your Son was obedient all the way to the cross and, and suffered and died, and died for us. us. Make, Make us humble and self-giving, self -giving, serving, serving others as he served, served us. us. Amen. Amen. In thankfulness to God who makes all things new, let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Preserve your church, Lord God, that she might not be silent, but give thanks to you and sing praises to your name, that in the midst of her trials she may ever remain watchful and cling to the promises of your kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless the leaders of our church, Lord God, including Pastor Smith, our bishop, Pastor Aldous, our district bishop, and all the other district bishops, and all our pastors, that through their faithful service they may encourage us to tell others that the Blessed One has come among us and lead us in singing hosannas to our coming King. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. In your mercy, Lord God, we call home those who have wandered from your church, that acknowledging their sinfulness, they may come to know that it is you who kills and makes alive, who wounds and heals, so that every knee should bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. Lord God, strengthen us by your Spirit, that we may also stand firm in the truth and witness to those in authority over us. Bless our country and those whom you have appointed to rule over us, including Queen Elizabeth II, Mr Morrison, our Prime Minister, Mr Malinowskis, our Premier, the other State Premiers, Members of Parliament and the Senate and all others who serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. prayer. Gracious God, Watch over our community and neighbourhoods. Bless our Mayor and the Mid-Murray Council, our school councils, those who protect us, those in the healing professions and all merchants and places of employment. Give us willing hearts to use our gifts in service to friends, neighbours and community members. Lord, in your mercy. Hear, hear our prayer. Lord God, be the refuge of those who are weary in body and spirit. Deliver the sick from their infirmities. Be the rock and fortress of those who are near death, that they may faithfully commit themselves into your hands, trusting in your unfailing love. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Bless our communion, Lord God, that as we receive your body and blood, we may remember what you suffered for us through your passion and eagerly desire the fullness of your kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. We rejoice with those who have already received the promised eternal inheritance obtained by your blood. Guard and keep us by your word and sacraments that we also may benefit eternally from the redemption you have provided in Christ Jesus. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. Into your hands, Lord God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. In preparation for the Lord's Supper, we'll sing the communion hymn, Lord Jesus, we humbly pray.
the Lord be with you. And And also also with with you. you. Lift up your hearts. Jesus Christ on the night when he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said take and eat this is my body which is given for you do this in remembrance of me in the same way he took the cup after the supper and when he had given thanks he gave to them and said drink of it all of you This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Gracious Father, we therefore remember the sacrifice of our Lord in celebration as we receive his body and blood with this bread and wine. We rejoice to receive all that he has done for us in his life and death, his resurrection and ascension, And we wait for his coming again to share with us the heavenly feast. Fill us with your Holy Spirit that we who receive the body and blood of Christ may live as true members of the body of your Son. Amen. Amen. Take away our sin. Give us 
bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Thanks be Thanks to be God. God. Let us pray together post-communion prayer. Loving Father of all, your only Son came as a servant and was obedient all the way to his death on the cross. 
as he has served us here at this table. Make us humble like him and bring us to be with him in his glory. For he lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. May Christ, our crucified Saviour, draw you to himself so that you may find in him the assurance of sins forgiven and the gift of eternal life. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favour and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Go in peace and have the same humble attitude as our Lord. In the, in the name, name of Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen. Please be seated to sing the closing hymn, When His Time Was Over. Oh, no.